Hey guys, it's Mr. Post, and on today's video, we'll be checking out some riverboat problems. This uh, is a question that we just saw on our recent quiz. It reads that our rowboat is traveling 2.5 meters per second to the west. It encounters a current that is traveling 6 meters per second to the south. The first part of the problem is going to read, what is the resultant velocity of the boat, including the angle? Okay, so we're looking for the question, what is the resultant velocity of the boat? So let's take a two seconds here and draw the picture, okay? Let's draw the picture. I want you to see that my boat is traveling at 2.5 meters per second to the west. That is a velocity vector, okay? So here's my stream. This is my stream. All right, these are the banks. This is going to be my east bank, and this is going to be the west bank of my stream. I know this because I'm crossing the stream and I'm traveling 2.5 meters a second to the west. Excellent. Now, I also want to label the velocity of the stream. The stream's velocity is taking me downward or south, and it is traveling at 6 meters per second. And so the first question is, what is the resultant velocity of the boat? So the boat wants to go across the river at 2.5 meters per second, but at the same time, it is being taken down the river too. So what is its true velocity? And we're going to make a triangle here. Okay, we're going to make a triangle. The point right here at which the two arrows meet, okay, where the two arrows meet, that tells me that this is going to be the resultant. So I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem here, and that's going to be 2.5 squared plus 6 squared is going to give me the resultant squared. All right, let's take some time and calculate this problem. Okay, I went ahead here and did the math. 2.5 squared gives me 6.25. 6 squared gives me 36. Add them together, and that's going to equal 42.25. Now, 42.25 still equals r squared, so I need to take the square root of it to find out what the resultant is. And I found that my resultant velocity is 6.5 meters per second. Does that make sense to me? Well, it's definitely greater than the longest of the components. My components were 6.6 meters per second south, 2.5 meters per second west. And that number is definitely greater than both of them. Now, the next part of this has to be, as the question does add here, what is my angle? Now, all the angles that we've been looking at have been counterclockwise direction. Okay, so we're looking at counterclockwise from zero degrees. And I'm just going to draw a crosshair right here. This is a crosshair. Now, the question is, what is that angle right there? And the angle has to come from zero degrees as my counterclockwise. So the first thing we have to establish then is, what is this angle right here? Okay, and whatever that angle is, we're going to add it to, all right, this is 180 degrees right here on my, my little grid, 180 degrees. So I'm going to add this to whatever plus 180 degrees. So let's now solve for that angle. When I look at this triangle here, I see that it's going to be uh, 6 is my y, 2.5 is my x. And I can find tangent, all right? Tangent of theta equals 6 divided by 2.5. Now, what I'm trying to solve for is theta, so I need to isolate it. I'm going to isolate it by doing theta equals inverse tangent of 6 divided by 2.5. And I have just calculated that out to be 67.4 degrees. Now, that 67.4 degrees, I'm going to shade it in right here, is this. Is this angle right here. I still need to add that to my 180 degrees. So 180 degrees plus 67.4 is going to equal... I'm just going to put this right here so it's crystal clear what I'm doing. I'm adding it to 180 degrees. It's supposed to be counterclockwise from zero. It's going to equal 247 
degrees. So what is my true result in velocity? The true result in velocity is 6.5 meters per second at 247 degrees. So now that takes care of question A. What is the result in velocity of the motorboat, including the angle? We have that right here. All right, that brings us to our next part of the problem, part B. If the river is actually 40 meters wide, and that's kind of what I'm highlighting right here in my new picture, we have a 40 meter wide river, how much time does it take the boat to travel shore to shore? Now, prior to this, I did find a result in velocity. The result in velocity went across the river at an angle. That velocity does not at all solve for how... I, how long it takes to get across the river. In order to get across the river, the only velocity I need to know is my rowboat's westward velocity. All right. So how long will it take to get across the river? I'm going to use this right here. That is the solution for how long it takes to get across the river. That tells me my leftward or westward velocity. I'm going westward at 2.5 meters per second. So I'm going to use one of two velo uh, velocity equations. I could use velocity equals distance divided by time. And I could also use distance equals VIT plus one half AT squared. But in this problem, my velocity of my boat is constant. It's going across constantly at 2.5 meters per second. A constant velocity means no acceleration. And if I was to substitute a zero in for acceleration, I would find out that this part of the equation is gone. All right, That part of the equation I do not need. And if I just erase that part of the equation out, I now have my two equations to choose from. Now these two equations are actually identical now. Distance equals velocity divided by time, as well as velocity equals distance divided by time. Algebra will reveal that they're exact same. So when I want to solve for how much time does it take to get across the river, I simply need to rearrange either one of these. Because both these are the same, I'm going to make them into a brand new formula. And I can rearrange either one of them to have time equals my dis distance or displacement divided by my, 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 excuse me, by my velocity. And in this case, let's throw this in here, fill in the equation. The distance is going to be 40 meters. The amount of time it takes to travel across is going to be 40 divided by 2.5 meters per second. And the amount of time that it takes to go across is going to be 16 seconds. Now that 16 seconds is going to be very important for us when we answer question C. In question C we're looking at what distance downstream does the boat reach the opposite shore. So here we have the boat, once again, is traveling across the river at 2.5 meters per second. The river is also taking the boat downstream at 6 meters per second. Now the question is, how far downstream does the boat go before it reaches the opposite shore? The only velocity that matters in this case is going to be the downstream velocity. In this case, 6 meters per second. We're going to use the same equation as before. Distance or displacement equals vi times t plus one half a t squared. Now, because I am moving at constant velocity of six meters per second, I'm going to erase that part of the equation. Now, that part of the equation I'm erasing because a is zero. Since there is no acceleration, the distance down shore will equal my velocity multiplied by my time. So my distance or displacement is going to be equal to 6 meters per second times time. In this case, we learned a second ago that we were traveling for 16 seconds. So my displacement is going to be equal to 6 times 16, which gives me a final distance down shore of 96 meters. Okay, guys. So as a review, 
We looked at this originally, that my boat was traveling at 2.5 meters per second westward with a 6 meter per second velocity of the stream going southward. We solved for a resultant velocity. We also then solved for how much time it took for the boat to cross the river, and the time it took to cross the river was 16 seconds. And therefore, we apply the 16 seconds now multiplied to my downstream or southward velocity of the river, equaling 6 times 16, 96 meters, is how far it would land on the opposite shore. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. Catch you later. Thanks for tuning in.